Well, Israel's Prime Minister has vowed to dismantle and demolish Hamas ahead of an expected coordinated assault by ground, sea and air. Joining us live from Sterot in the southern parts of Israel is I-24 News correspondent Pierre Kloschenlehrer. Pierre, good to see you. Thanks for your time this evening. Um, the evacuation of Sterot set to begin ahead of a Gaza ground operation. Right, it started and it's over, I would say, because... Uh, in a small city of 30,000 inhabitants, maybe 10% of the residents have decided to stay nonetheless. And uh, the rest of the population has either left voluntarily already some eight days ago after the onslaught by Hamas terrorists on the city. And the rest, those who didn't have the wherewithal, didn't have families uh, to host them, have been shipped to safer places uh, in the country uh, with the help of the municipality, but they have a budget only for seven days of evacuation. That means that if the government doesn't allocate more monies, they will have to return because they're in hotel rooms and hotels cannot uh, survive the economic cost of hosting those people for a longer period of time at this point. So the city is basically invested now by uh, security forces and lone residents, and I've seen them, and they're in a terrible shape. They're, they have a tormented gaze. Uh, most of them are on social welfare. Uh, they're isolated people. They're not married. You have some elderly also who decided to stay. Uh, and as a result, maybe as a result of that, a rocket fire has ceased in this city since 11 a.m. on Monday, local time, maybe because there's no point in kicking a dead body, so to speak, although the city is not destroyed, but there's been a lot of rocket fire on the city. It's been quite martyred by rocket fire, 367 rocket, fire, rocket launch on Zderot, 132 impacts, and as a result of the onslaught, because the terrorists managed to enter the city, there's been 44 dead in the city, residents, civilians, non-residents who came for the holiday, civilians, security forces, be it police, soldiers, firefighters, who died trying to repel the Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad terrorists. Pierre, thank you so much for your time. We'll talk to you again soon. Well, Zaka, an Israeli organisation that responds to terror attacks, disasters and accidents, was some of the first on the scene following last weekend's Hamas terror attack. They rescued survivors and retrieved the bodies of those killed in the attacks. Sky Stuart Ramsey reports and a warning that some viewers may find these images distressing. They're still finding the bodies of the victims of the Hamas attack over a week ago. The Zaka organization that retrieves the remains of the dead say the latest person to be found at the Kafar Azar kibbutz had been beheaded. Yossi Landau is the boss. 33 years he's volunteered for Zaka all over the world. He's never seen anything like this. The sheer brutality of Hamas has stunned his entire team. But in Kfar Aza and Be'eri, we're talking about a total of, I would say, about 280 bodies, 280 casualties. I would say 80% was tortured. 80% of it was tortured. And you're talking children, adults, children, when you're talking a pile, two piles, you found them in Be'eri, two, two piles of ten children each were tied to the back, burned to death. This is, this is something behind, this is next level. And I mean, it's actually indescribable, really. It's indescribable, really. It's indescribable, and I won't describe everything that I saw. We joined him after the military called Zaka to take more bodies away. This time, Hamas gunmen. A soldier stops us. He says it's too dangerous to continue. Yossi wants to pick up the bodies. The soldier says he can't. 
Eventually, they agree a digger will go forward and pick up the dead. We take another route. How often do they find bombs and have to stop you from working? Oh, all the time. All the time. Almost every time. Have they been left on purpose? Are they booby traps? Yes, they trapped. Uh, they trapped the bodies. The dead fighters are gathered together and placed in body bags. Members of the team then mark the bags with an X. It designates that they aren't civilians, but are the bodies of the killers themselves. Well, they are still finding the bodies of civilians in this kibbutz. This is actually the recovery of the Hamas attackers, and they were killed here. Um, it's interesting, but it's really dangerous here. We're right on the front line with Gaza. Soldiers have told us to come back and stay in this area because there's a direct line of sight. There are missiles coming in. They said there were three shortly before uh, we arrived. And there are booby traps. Um, many of the bodies have been booby trapped. So it's a very, very dangerous and painstaking operation. One week on. Saka already knows that their teams are suffering extreme psychological stress. Their families have been briefed to pass up the line if their loved ones are behaving abnormally. Humanely retrieving the very people who carried out the attacks is itself tough to do. Is it difficult to actually recover the bodies of Hamas men who've carried out a massacre? Very difficult. It's very difficult for us when we know that each and every of them killed our brothers and sisters and tortured the people and that's what they came in for that and, and still we have to handle it. What's clear is that the Hamas rampage of terror here changed from location to location. Sometimes they just murdered people but when they had time they tortured, maimed and killed men, women and children. The killer's bodies are removed by a bulldozer. Stuart Ramsey, Sky News, Southern Israel.